And my favorite actor is John Cena. My name is Gavin Saylor, and my favorite team is the Los Angeles Dodgers. My name is Maddox Jones, and my favorite dessert is strawberry cheesecake. My name is Tyler Donges, and my favorite baseball player is Jack Leiter. My name is Noah Davidson, and my favorite food is chicken quesadillas. My name is Chance Rutherford, and my favorite baseball player is Anthony Rizzo. My name is JJ Vogel, and my favorite actor is Robert Downey Jr. My name is Cooper Odin, and my favorite subject at school is math. We've got a little black raspberry chip ice cream in there. Hey, wouldn't we? Skyline Chill. How about Grater's ice cream? Barry Larkin, of course, the great Cincinnati Red, introduced hey, us to Grater's ice cream. Tell the is blown in. They beat Tennessee one zip. Got beaten by a California team that's no longer here. Nine zip, and that's the Rocky thing. You've got to win every game after that if you want to play today, and they've been able to do that. But it's going to be a tall challenge, literally, with Maddox Munson on the mound. Big oh, part of this run, one start here. He went to distance, six innings, gave up just one hit. Not as much swing and miss as we saw from Gavin Weir, but he throws a ton of strikes. Oh. Let's do it. First pitch in there for a strike. We are underway, 12-44. In the east, Caleb Harden is now being focused on by us oh. and Hawaii, who's walking past the top right. of the hill, probably going down to take some of their cuts before their game at 3.30 Eastern time. That one's a little high, one ball, two strikes. Ohio, as you saw, four and one. South Dakota, three and oh. And their offense has showed up last three games, 16 runs. That's a swing and a miss and a really good start for Maddox Munson, strikeout number one today. He said he would pregame. He doesn't have a lot of swing and miss. What he likes to do is trust his defense, but that one elevating the fastball to get the first big out. You know the adrenaline's flowing right now for Maddox Munson. I think everybody's got it flow. And here's J.J. Vogel. He's the first baseman. Oh. And that one's just a little bit high. All volunteer umpiring crew today. And Mike Kabalik behind home plate. He got jammed. Here comes Maddox. He fields it fair from his knees, throws to first, and the out is called. And we do have instant replay here at the Little League World Series. The first base coach, Danny Adams and Chris Kraft. They are coaches of Ohio to go with the manager, Ken Coomer. This is like the, the ravage wedge right here. <laughs> Just pure it. Sucks right back to the hole. The problem is it's not easy to handle it when you're on the mound. So Maddox Munson, watch this ball just check right there. Now he's got to try to get a handle on it, and then he's got to clear himself from the base run. I tell you what, when I saw it first, I thought he was safe. I don't know. Kind of hit the middle of the bag right there. And I was going to say, if he got the front of it, yeah. he is safe, but. His foot is way up in the sky. I think he's, he's out. out. I think he's going to be called I think he's out. out. Yeah, good call. Yes, First base umpire Ricky Hall. Right, you're listening for the sounds down there. You're, it's impossible to see a foot and a ball go into glove. So you're listening for sound. Did the ball smack that glove or did the foot hit the base first? So the call at first base was originally out. And we'll see if that call stands or is overturned. And the call stands. What a play then by Maddox yeah, Munson because that ball wasn't going to go foul. No. It was staying right there. No, it just it just stuck right when it came down. Then you got to deal with the base run. And it's not like you can get up and get out of the way. You, you're kind of stuck wherever you are. Cleared himself enough and a good play by Hayden Gorsett, the first baseman. Chance Rutherford, whoa, right behind his head. Maddox has a little bit of that in him. <laughs> he, he likes to throw strikes, as he said, hopefully. <laughs> I love How that game that? plan. <laughs> Four for 12. Couple of doubles. Big triple the other night for this kid, Chance Rutherford. He's got four runs batted in. Looks the best on this team from the West Side Little Leaguers. One ball, one strike. Yep. One ball, two strikes. And it's working right now for Big Mad Dog on the mound. Three swings and misses already in the first game in which he threw six innings. He had only two of them. That's laced to center. And backing up is his buddy on the mound, Gaffin Weir, who's in center field. And Rutherford, first hit of championship Saturday. It's a good little two-strike poke, too. I mean, this is what I love, what we see in the hitters that are here, especially at this point in the championship. Two strikes. I mean, really just three quarters. Get your barrel to the ball. Not a bad location away, but again, two strikes. Drive that one up the middle. 
And here comes Noah Davidson. This is the kid that Jess talked about on the open. He's the catcher. He swings that one and fouls it off the screen. He moved up from seventh in the order to clean up. Big day against California. Five foot four, 120 oh, pound, 12 year old. A little high, so we go one ball, one strike. Noah Davidson's cousin played in the 2010 Little League World Series, but apparently they're not currently on speaking terms because he didn't get any advice from them. <laughs> Maddox, he only throws from his knees. That's He's done good. that twice. He fields his own position. The ball placed on the mound. We'll see South Dakota come to the plate for the first time when we come back. Healthiest cities in the United States, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. It is home of Falls Park, the Ark of Dreams, Dallas Clark, and of course the Sioux Falls Little Leaguers. Three and is the best start by a Midwest team in Little League World Series history, and they are an enthusiastic bunch. Say hello to the folks at the Gateway Lounge watch party. Patrick Mahomes, the Kansas City Chiefs quarterback, sent out a tweet earlier leading them on. Population 177,000, currently 82 degrees and cloudy there, just like it is here. Let's meet the kids as they get set to bat for the first time today. My name is Casey Mettiger. My favorite actor is Squints from The Sandlot. You're killing me, Smalls! My name is Brayson Fox. My favorite actor is Kevin Hart. My name is Brecken Beiler, and my favorite baseball player is Kirby Puckett. My name is Kai Carlson, and my favorite food is breakfast burritos. My name is Gunnar Elfson, and my favorite team is the Red Sox. My name is Hayden Gorsett, and my favorite player is Derek Jeter. My name is Alex McKinney, and my favorite actor is Kevin Hart. My name is Easton Riley, and my favorite food is popcorn. My name is Alpen Sonicson, and my favorite season is summer. My name is Bo Kerner, and my favorite NBA basketball player is Zion Williamson. My name is Noah Kenzie, and my favorite food is my mom's lasagna. My name is Boston Bryant, and my favorite baseball player is Mike Trout. Hi, my name is Gavin Weir, and my favorite MLB team is the Minnesota Twins. My name is Maddox Munson. My favorite dessert is everything. Maybe a few Twins fans dreaming on somebody like Gavin Weir, or maybe Gavin Weir, pitching for them someday. Long way between Little League World Series and Major League Baseball, although we did have the Major Leaguers here once again. A memorable day. Sioux Falls has only played three games. They've only scored six runs, but the biggest number is the zero. Yeah. They haven't given up any. It's crazy how great they've been, but again, sort of a small sample size. And now it's on Cooper Oden, 5'7", 140 pounder on the mound today. And South Dakota's played three games. They've used three arms all the way through it. Ohio's had to play a few more to get to this point. Cooper Oden on now for the third time. They've used seven different pitchers. We'll start with the shortstop, Reckon Beitler. Off speed oh. pitch, that one misses. You look around the infield, Maddox Jones, the third baseman, perhaps anticipating a bunt, is about six feet in front of third base on the grass. So he's about 55 feet away from the batter. Oh. The hot corner's getting a little warmer. Yes. I mean, I'm looking at it from here. I think that's really close to the bat. Two, two and oh, Jess, and this one is a slow roller to the shortstop. Clay got him by half a step. Already we've seen some good defense early in this game. Things changed a little bit when we went from the ability to have 13-year-olds to only 12-year-olds. Yeah. The ball's just not hit as far. Certainly kids in these two games, they can hit them over the wall, but just not as many. So there's an emphasis on contact and defense. Boston Bryant's the right fielder, three for nine at the Little League World Series. One oh, and this one's got some spin on it. Fielded Clay who can't get it out of his glove. It probably kept spinning once he got it into that bare hand. And an infield hit for Boston Bryant. There's not a whole lot you can do on this one because it is. Gets in his glove, it's spinning, and if you don't get a good handle on it right away, there's just not enough time to make the adjustment. In on the hands of Boston Bryant, he just hit it, just hit it to the right spot. You can see that ball just spin off the bare hand. The goal was an infield single, first hit of the day for South Dakota. And here's Gavin Weir. 
And this one is popped up to left. It's playable. Caleb Harden coming in. That's a big out. Recorded for Ohio to take care of Weir, who hit one over the wall the other night for a three-run home run. So two down in the first. Gavin Weir retired. That was a good swing. He just got under it. I mean, he gets, like, we're talking five different degrees on top of that, and that's out of here. Cleanup hitter Noah Kenzie. He's the third baseman on this team from Sioux Falls. Oh. Breaking ball misses. Noah's 12, 5'3", 125. He's a big fan of Chris Bryant because they both play third base. Hurts on the inside corner. Ball on a strike. Also, really like Brian because he really liked the Cubs, so we're not sure if he switched allegiance now to the Giants. Although, not a good, bad year to switch allegiance to no. the Cubs and the Giants. <laughs> if you're going to go, this is a good time to go. Blame it on the player. I got to follow him. <laughs> Ahead one and two, forces on at second base with Boston Bryant at first. <laughs> got him on the corner. <laughs> And the first punch out for Cooper Oden. Very efficient. Only 10 pitches to get through one. We are through one of six. Zero, zero. West Side Little League, Hamilton, Ohio, 1991-1993. These are the teams that have made it to Williamsport. And there are a bunch of teams around the country that have had success. This is certainly one of those five times to the World Series. You mentioned 19 state titles for the West Side Little Leaguers. Never, never gone this far, though. Nope. Never gotten to this point with a plan on the final weekend. Same thing for the kids from South Dakota. Fort Hamilton, named after Alexander Hamilton in Ohio. And we'll have Maddox Jones, the third baseman, Cooper Clay, and Gage Maggard. Well, a little twist as South Dakota has decided to move the left fielder, Gunnar Allison, to the right field, and the right fielder, Boston Bryant, to play left this half inning. Play. There goes Maddox Jones, looking for his first hit here at Williamsport. Good day to start if he can, and he swings in the first one and fouls it straight back. This is just straight Maddox on Maddox right here. Maddox Munson on the mound, Maddox Jones at the plate. Ooh, nice. whoosh, spun one in there. That's the look you want to see when you're on the mound. You see those knees buckle like that. That's, that is a good feeling. Now an out ahead 0-2. See if he tries to elevate eyes, elevate the fastball, go back to the breaking ball. Over the head of Chase Mediger and into right. Maddox Jones picks up hit number one for himself at this Little League World Series. Great to see our buddies on college game day back, including Coach Corso. The football season starts this weekend, 16th annual MEAC SWAC Challenge. That kicks off tonight, Alcorn State, NC Central. They're in Atlanta. Our celebration of the HBCUs begins 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on ESPN and the ESPN app. One app, one tap. So that's sort of a monumental moment there that Maddox Jones reached base. That's the first hit we've seen in a long time. He just kind of missed one right there because yeah. he was trying to bunt. Clearly was trying to bunt. I don't think he did. Called it a ball. Called it a ball. This time to short. Butler flips to first. Not in time. Good arm though by Medinger. Man, he gets rid of it quick and he's got a strong arm. Right, right. Stay down. Stay down. Stay yeah, down. Right now Cooper roll Clay over, is roll down roll roll first. Over. Looks like he hurt himself. Let me see. Stepped on the bag. So we got a little time out here on the field. And the athletic trainer right out there looks like he's grabbing his left leg. And Beitler and Mediger got this thing transferred real quick. This infield, I mean, it, they look big league when they make plays. Um, and my guy, Case and Mediger, the second baseman. Rap, we, I hadn't seen pants like this until well, until the boys from Starkville made a run this year. That's so right. you can thank Rowdy Jordan. 
You can thank Tanner Allen for the pants above the knees right there for Mediger because, man, he can turn a double play. He just looks like an infielder the way he moves. This is an important player they have down because he is the shortstop on this team. Obviously, he hits in the sixth spot. Originally, Cooper play was supposed to hit in the eighth spot. They moved him up. And the athletic trainer out there dealing with the left knee area of Cooper. Didn't appear to twist it when he stepped on the bag. And now he's back up. Mom's like, I've seen it. We need you, buddy. Hope you're okay. He's slowly walking off to see if this is going to be good enough to play on, jog on. That's a great sign there. Certainly have the ability, given that they have five substitute players, to use a special pinch runner and just let him work that yeah. out if he's able to do that instead of staying in the game and running. All right. It's a lot better there. I think we're good now. So he hangs in there, and if they actually did use a special pinch runner, he would have had to come out of the game and stay out because you can't do that the first time a player reaches base, and you can't bring a special pinch runner in for a substitute hitter off the bench. Even though he was a starter, he runs the bases the first time he's on the bases. So we're set, Gage Maggard. Keep an eye on Clay and speed at first base. Oh. Inside, just a small lead. Gage oh. went to bunt, pulled it back, and that's inside. Two balls, no strikes. At the game we expected between these two teams. Whew. That time it is called a strike. Two balls and a strike. Kenzie still in at third base in case there is a bunt. Two balls and a strike with Cooper Clay at first. He's got that breaking pitch working pretty well right now. Likes that one. Again, a 2 1 breaking ball right here. Drops it in there, evens the count back at 2 and 2. So two misfires to start, then two in a row to even a count. Oh, didn't miss by much. He is right on the plate. One of the things we've seen so many little yeah. leaguers do this year, man, they are right on the plate. As close it. as you can get. Three and two, big pitch. That's high. Now two. Or aboard. Quality at bat right there. He took him to the limit. Ran up his pitch cow. Part of the game plan for a team that has really used two guys for the most part to pitch. Get into that bullpen. See what else they got behind Munson and Weir. We've seen Mediger, but that was just to finish off the no hitter. One out. Thanks, one guy. Not right. out. Cooper Oden. Big swing, and he swings through it. Strike one. This is an unfamiliar position, obviously, for South Dakota to have any runners on, let alone one in scoring position. On the ground, underneath the first baseman off the glove of Medica, rounding and coming in. Now, now he puts the brakes on. Here comes Clay, and he scores. <laughs> Well, he went halfway down third base with that banged up leg of his, put the brakes on, realized Gunnar Alfson didn't have that baseball, and he continued on home, and Ohio has a 1-0 lead. Just puts it in a good spot right there, and Casey Mediger, the second base, but just off of his glove, then out and right, just off the glove of Gunnar Alfson. He's charging it, and watch the turn. What about go, go, go. now he puts go. the brakes on and then recognizes after the go, 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 no. through the go, go that way. And for the first time in this Little League World Series, South Dakota is trailing. Here's a good bunt here by Crew Brown. Perfect spot, no place to go, and the bases are loaded. Ohio off to a great start, and Crew Brown, the crouton, <laughs> delivers 
A single on a bunt. Beautiful drag bunt. Squares up here, and it's the location. Because he's able to deaden it right out in front of play, this is no man's land. And Munson knows it, looks at third base as maybe his only chance, but smartly holds on to it. Let's go ahead and clap down the first base. Both line. of them, good for him. To the plate, otherwise let's get it, let's get it out. Okay, no more big innings here. Okay, eliminate the big inning, we'll allow one more. Okay, and then we're gonna get out of this thing, we're gonna bang the ball. We're gonna bang the ball. Let's go, Mad Dog, here we go. Thank you. My course, it's the manager, looks around at his team, loves the way his team plays, and traditionally they've played terrific defense. There's an error on the right fielder, not able to catch it. Matters at third, Odin's at second, Brown is at first, and Levi Smith is going to bat for the first time, and he swings and fouls that off. They're aggressive with the swings early against Maddox Munson. Levi Smith bats in the spot of Caleb Harden. Oh, high. 29 pitches for Maddox Munson. Of course, the league has a pitch count rule. You can throw 85 before you have to be taken out. That one is into right. That's going to get down. Gage Maggard comes. They are waving Odin. Here he comes. And here comes the Crouton. He scores. How about free run base clearing double? And he ends up at third base. Ohio now leads it four to nothing. Levi Smith, a huge hit. You ready? Slow roller here off the bat of Vogel. Come home with it. Ooh, called out. You can see the reaction of Levi Smith saying, I got under the tag, which it appeared from where we sit, which is high above home plate, he may have. There does not appear to be any movement from the manager to ask for a review. No, I, I think the issue here is they used their challenge early in the first inning, and I, I don't think he wants to use his second one right here. If he did, I think he's safe. I think that front leg got in there just before the tag. Popped up sky high. Easton Riley said he's got it. Here comes Kenzie, the third baseman. Oh, he took an elbow to the head. The ball was caught by the catcher, Riley. Terrible collision. Kenzie bounces right back up. But he took an elbow right to his head. He goes down. Watch Riley hang onto it. Mm, and he clipped his third baseman. This presentation of Middle League World Series continues after this message and a word from our AB Station. We're all right. Welcome back, everyone. ABC's coverage of the Little League World Series presented by T-Mobile. 4 nothing, Ohio, bottom two. Julie Foudy's with us. Jules. Ravi, I had to go find Cooper Odin's mom, who is a pacer, Trisha. So we're just going to pace together, Trisha. All right? Help me, so. <laughs> so we'll pace and talk to make it good for you. All right, why do we pace? What's, the, what's behind this? Um, it's all nerves on me. Coop has no nerves. It's all me. Every time he's on the mound, I just, I can't sit still. I can't sit. I have to walk. Um, my team's kind of learned how to deal with it. They uh, play a little game called, thank you, <laughs> played a, a called like where's Trisha instead of where's Waldo. I'm usually somewhere in the outfield, somewhere around the stands. It's not as easy here. I've struggled, so they've just started giving me an aisle in the back that no one sits in, and I just walk back and forth, and it, it helps me. And I must say you're a considerate pacer because you don't want to block them, so you, you pace them. I make sure I have my own aisle so that I'm not blocking anybody. Um, yeah, just I don't I don't want to hinder anyone's view, but I and I'm tall, so I can't <laughs> pace in front of people. So I just find my aisle. <laughs> you you keep pacing and you keep watching. All right, uh, that last inning though, Cooper with the single RBI that has to help things. That helps tremendously. He needed that boost. Um, good job, Coop. Um, he yeah he's been what he. 
that hit meant a lot to him. He's been, you know, really putting the ball in play this tournament, but it doesn't always fall, and he needed that as a little confident boost to get him some confidence on the mound. And then Levi coming through with that triple afterwards to get those couple runs up. It's just going to take a little of the pressure off of him. Not me, but off of him. And uh, I think loosen him up a little bit, so. Uh, and there is a thief bandit, we have heard. Sorry, a snack bandit in the Grove. Carl, we'll get to the, the, the bottom of that in a little bit, but we're going to find out more about the snack bandit. It, it's a problem. We've got to figure it out because <laughs> we're running out of snacks. We've, we've sold Wegmans out down there, so. <laughs> I'm going to find out. I'm going to start looking, Trisha. Where are you? They don't yeah, call her capital J journalist Julie yeah, for nothing, and now she's on the hunt, so we'll have that problem solved very quickly. Back-to-back -back strikeouts here. Woo! As he struck out Kenzie to end the first, picks up a strikeout of Mediger to start the second. And now Gunnar Alfson, who was in right field, remember, just before that last half inning started, South Dakota switched the left fielder and the right fielder, Alfson and Bryant. Oh! The ball kept finding Gunner out there and right. So it's 4 nothing. Five hits already for Ohio. Unfamiliar for South Dakota to give up anything. And now in a big hole, four zip. Oh. I feel like the game always seems to find you. When you've got a, maybe a big error that happened on defense, it always seems like you're the one that's going to pick up the bat that next half inning. It's kind of how the game works. A chance to try to get back in, help your team. Good swing from number seven, Gunnar Alfson, 5'1", 198. His dad, Delvin, is one of the coaches, along with Jeff Riley. Mike Gorsett is the manager. He's one of the lucky kids who get to share this experience with his dad. So many of these kids haven't been able to touch, hold, hug their parents since this all started. Oh. Just a little high. So Devin Alston right protect, there. Protect, protect. Here we Long go. Big ball far. Let's go. Caden, go, go, Jax, let's go. both brothers. They need base runners. Three balls, two strikes to Alston. Reaches out, slaps it in the center field. There you go. Gunnar Alston is a board, second hit. Forget about South that other Dakota. Forget about that other shot. It's right here, it's right now. We got a lot of game left here, right? Huh? Here you go. Plenty of game left. Catch all the excitement from the Little League Baseball World Series Tournament. Visit the first ever virtual fan zone experience. You can visit littleleague.org slash fan zone. Some folks up there on the hill, usually we got 20, 25,000. It's obviously friends, family this year, and we hope like heck next year that it's full. Oh. Slow breaking pitch, misses inside. We'll say this, you guys have commented on it, Julie certainly experienced it. It is loud down on the first and third baseline. You wouldn't know that there weren't 25,000. A little stadium auditorium oh. in here, the noise just reverberates <laughs> off the uh, ceiling down to the field. He's always gonna be the loudest fan. It's gonna be mom, it's gonna be dad, it's gonna be grandma. I mean, doesn't matter, 20,000 or 250, the ones that are the loudest are here. Big swing, man. Hayden Gorsett went for the downs. She's got her eye on. She's got her eye on, to her credit, she actually keeps an eye on the game. A lot of moms oh, yeah. and dads, they're like, I can't even watch. She's, she's into it. Cooper Odin's mom, now Hayden Gorsett. On the ground to second, Magrin will flip to first. Yeah. Not in time. Good hustle down the line by Hayden Gorsett. Good job. See the bag popped off of the teeth sort of underneath, which holds the base in there, which is a way to prevent real injuries. Have that bag move off instead of just being locked in. See if he touches the base the first time. I don't think he did. I think he, he stepped on his ankle, and that was why the second baseman, Gage Maggard, immediately pointed at him, said, go tag him. I think he realized it now, too. Watch this. First of all, J.J. Bob was a first baseman. Like, that hurts. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> he's full speed right into his ankle. If he tags him right after, I think he's out. I think you're 100% right. Easton Riley swung at one. That's strike one. And that's exactly why Hayden Gorsett yes. ran back to first base. Like, I never touched that white thing there. Whew. 
good pitch. So Cooper Oden, who had a big single to help him score four, four. misses just outside. One ball, two strikes. Balls and two strikes. This is the first of two games, championship Saturday, all four United States teams, no international teams here. Otherwise, this would have been the international championship game with the U.S. title game at 3.30. But we have a Tom Seaver and a Hank Aaron bracket. And that's fouled off. That team's from California, Connecticut, Florida, Hawaii, and there's the Hawaii kids warming up. Louisiana, Nebraska, New Hampshire, Michigan also taking their cuts right now. New Jersey, Oregon, the team from Pennsylvania was here, Tennessee, Texas, and Washington. Congratulations to all of them. Slow roller, Odin got it. Flips, nice play. That'll make mom's pacing a little easier. Now we can stop and cheer. Through two at the Little League World Series, 4-0 Ohio. The Little World Series on ABC is presented by T-Mobile, the leader in 5G. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the... I don't know. Buy me some peanuts and... Cracker Jacks. And I never come back, so I thought... Root, root for the home team. I don't want to sing the rest. <laughs> okay. Almost. That was Almost. a lot. That was a lot. Cracker <laughs> Jacks. That's what it is. Well, they were focused uh -oh. on doing the worm on cement. <laughs> Mendoza was up here fighting with her pencil as she keeps score with a pencil. It appears uh, to be a losing battle at this point. Did, did not go well. This ball driven into left center field. Weir going over. He makes a great catch because he's Gavin Weir, and of course he does. Just when you think the game's not going to find him because he's not pitching, he hasn't hit a home run yet. He makes a beautiful catch. Laying out all the way. Gotta love Boston Bryant diving that. right yes. behind him just in case. Hands go, hands go up like Boston Bryant, like, yep, we got Gavin Weir on our side. That's my guy. We win. Oh, the double dive. <laughs> hands in the air. Beautiful. Great catch, Gavin Weir, the center fielder, who, of course, is the best pitcher we've seen in a long time. Now on the ground is short. Butler stays down and quickly across the diamond. And this is. This is the South Dakota defense yep. we got used to. How about this move at short? It is, it is so pretty, but defensively, if you saw in the outfield, Gavin Weir, go glove side with the double dive. <laughs> Watch my man behind him, too. <laughs> the right hand went up right away. There was a tip of the cap from a few different places right there. Noah Davidson knows he had extra bases. Take it away. Three pitches, two outs. Tyler Donjus will bat, looking for his first hit. Oh! Chin music from Maddox Munson. Another one fielded on the backhand. Oh, somewhere <laughs> Barry Larkin is smiling at what he just saw from Hamilton, Ohio's shortstop, Brecken Beitler. Silky smooth. How about five pitches to get out of that one? It's going to be a fair ball tailing towards the line. Oh, diving catch. He got it. And that one's in the hole. No way. Up quickly. Got Come him on. again. Smothered over there in second. Flip it. Got him. What a play. Rose this one to first. And Chari's got it. And a double play. 
Oh, he got one to hit. This one is driven deep to center. Oh, he robs him of a home run. Hey, let's show you some more today because it just seems like every time they're out here, we're seeing web jams. Gavin Weir out in center field gets the fist pump from his right fielder, Boston Bryant. And Breck and Beitler go ahead and put on a clinic out there, man. Ground ball right to him. Now watch his head. Go backside, backhand side, get all the way down, make that strong throw across. There's a reason why these kids hadn't given up a run coming into this game because they can really defend. Bottom of the third. First of our two championship games here on Saturday, the Hank Aaron bracket and the Tom Seaver bracket. Kyle Peterson, Jessica Mendoza, Carl Ravitz, Julie Foudy, 130 in the East. Second game, slated for 330. Maddox Munson, bats for the first time today, the number nine hitter, and he checks oh. one foul. So the Mad Dog trying to get something going here for South Dakota. Hard to win when you're not scoring, and it's because of their pitching. Oh, but they're going to figure out a way play. to get some runners and get some runs in. Six runs, three games, second fewest by a team that started 3 0. A swing and a miss. Team batting average coming in of just 210. Lowest well, since 2013 to make it this far. Manager Mike Gorsett down there at third base. One and two from Cooper Oden. Oh! Threw it right where he wanted to. And it was a good job by Noah Davidson not to move, wait for the home plate umpire to make his decision. Hey. That's yep. strike three hey. and a breaking pitch from Odin. He picks up strikeout number three. He likes this one. Not afraid to go to the breaking ball. Let's see those hands. Yeah, good job getting the hands over the top. You can see the spin that's going to bring it all the way back down. Maddox Munson recognized it. Just. Recognized it a little bit too late. One strikeout apiece in each of the first three innings for Cooper Oden. Here comes Brecken Beitler, the great shortstop that we've seen from South Dakota. So apparently the home plate umpire went out to Cooper Oden. Apparently went to his mouth. That's what it was, okay. While on the mound. And they give him a ball for that. So it's one ball, no strikes. Hi. Mike DeBellick is wearing the ump cam today, and that's his look at it. Just like that, we're even at one and one. We've thrown one pitch. Beitler steps in with a whole bunch of people rooting him on, including his four siblings who range in age from 18 to 9. A little late there. Brielle, Jamin, Dozie, Bodie. Eliza's the mom. His dad, too. He's hanging out. Phil, who's a middle school counselor. And a one and two to the leadoff hitter. Late great Kirby Puckett, favorite player of Brecken Beitler. Played for the Twins, his favorite team. He loved how clutch Kirby was, and as he's right, he was a terrific all-around five tool player. Kirby was fantastic. In the dirt. But did he play the guitar like Brecken? Apparently he can rock out. Teammates give him a lot of credit. I'm sure they've had some fun up in the Grove. Need a guitar to break up the monotony every now and then, huh? Two balls, two strikes. That's oh. high and outside. We go three and two. River inclined to pick up an instrument and play it during the uh, softball days or UKP during your playing days? I no. Inclined, yes. Did I actually do it? No. <laughs> on the ground is short on a short hop. Cooper play and just in time. Reckon Butler was calling himself safe. It was close. Looked like by about half step. But maybe not so much. But the manager isn't going to have him take a look at it. And 
Again, a good yes, call. Yeah. Good yep. call. Ricky Hall down there at first base. Looks like they're going to review it, and it's going to likely stand based on what we just saw. Beitler's got to find a new place to hit it. Twice he has hit it to right. Cooper Clay. Cooper Clay has retired him twice. They were almost past you before you took your Breck hack. Well, get comfortable where you're at, okay? Get comfortable where you where you want to be at, okay? Those fastballs went by you like they were going 95. You just got to make that adjustment in your head, okay? So fastball, adjust curve. Trust your hands. You got good hands. The Butler is retired. They did take a look at it, and so far, umpires to review zero. Only two hits for South Dakota. One of them came off the bat of Boston Bryant. And here he is for the second time. Single up the middle his last time up. Four for ten. It 400. He looks at a breaking pitch that has gone. So what was the first base coach telling the yeah. base runner? I like the messaging. Well, he was saying you're late. Basically, the two strikes you had, you're making contact back here. And his response was they're telling me to move up in the box. Why? Because Odin's got a ridiculous Hi. breaking ball. But... I like the message and just keep coming the whole year out. I always hate moving around in the batter's box because at the end of the day, you've been playing this entire tournament in one spot. Stay there. One ball, one strike. And that one is past the dive of Cooper Clay. Boston Bryant. He is now two for two. He got two of the three hits, and he's five for 11 at the Little League World Series. Like these teams, we only have one hitter in this lineup that's hit a home run. They have a lot of contact swings, and you see this one. He just kind of got gets slowed down. Watch his barrel just slow down, because he sees where the pitch is and just hand-eye coordination to that ball for a hit. Dangerous gaff and Weir rips that one into right field. Bryant will go to second. He'll look at his coach. Here comes the throw, and it's caught by Maddox Jones. Gavin Weir reaches, and a little two-out magic maybe for South Dakota with two on. Him off, okay? Two. That was loud right there. <laughs> Gavin Weir barrels it up. You, you know exactly where it is. If that has backspin and gets up, it's 4-2. But instead, back-to-back -back single, South Dakota with a chance here. Their cleanup hitter is Noah Kinsey. Get three hits. Two RBIs here in Williamsport. And a little late on that fastball. Four balls, one strike. the change in velocity between fastball and that. And, and that's that the pitch. slow breaking ball. These guys are having to respect these kids. You can tell they're late on the fastball because they know what Odin's got in his back pocket. Look at that look. Oh. I love the look of Kenzie when he gets in the batter's box. Yep. I mean, it is just focus. He understands the situation, the score. I mean, he is locked in. When his playing days are over, Noah wants to get into the broadcast booth. Two balls, one strike, play. Talk about sports, loves them all, especially this one. Oh, foul that one off. He plays them off. Football, basketball, baseball. Good. South Dakota looking for their third consecutive hit with two outs. And the 2 2 to Kenzie. And he goes into go, right. Go, that gets go, down. Go, 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 Bryant's go, being waved. Go, 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 Here's the throw. Go, go, go. He's safe. Weir goes to third. That is three straight oh, hits with two outs. And the first run for South Dakota. Rob, what have I been saying this entire tournament? Two strike swings. And on this one, it's a breaking ball. This is beautiful. Because you slow down, you see the pitch, you're not trying to crush it. You're poking it through the right side of the field to get a hit in the first RBI for South Dakota. Um, all right, hey, listen. We're gonna, if they steal, uh, throw back to the pitcher fast, all right? If you got him at second, go. If you can't got him, fake it and look at third, all right? Got it? Uh, Max, come second. Let's go. 
Yes, sir. So first and third, little league situation. No runners can lead. But a lot of the times, especially with an athlete like Kenzie, when the catcher has it first and third, he'll just take off and try to try to get a throw, get in a rundown, or just steal the base. They got one run and the first pitch. And here goes the runner. They'll fire back to the pitcher. He had Weir. We didn't really see him. And now second and third. And this is Oplin Sonneson. He hits for Kaysen Mediger. A little bounce here for South Dakota in the bottom of the third. Boston Bryan scored. He has scored four of their seven runs in the World League World Series. On the corner to Auckland Sonneson, and that is strike number two, 0 oh and 2. Pretty telling sign. We're watching you, but we miss you. Haven't been able to spend much time at all with him. That's a little too far outside. One ball, two strikes. He approached them. Maybe the fastball on the outside part of the play for strike two. Try to expand it a little bit more, still way ahead on the mound. Got him there. Good pitch, and Hopkins Sonneson strikes out. Good job by South Dakota, though. They get Cooper Oden. They get their first run. Bryant with a single. Weir with a single. Kinsey with a single. It's 4-1, we're midway through. This presentation of Little League World Series continues after this message and a word from our ABC stations. All right, welcome back to Little League World Series. I found Sioux Falls, South Dakota's team. And I know you guys, this is Mason Riley, uh, Easton Riley's brother. I know you guys have been missing school. I hope the sign helps. I think it will. Uh, and, and Mason, you played in the 2017 Little yeah. League World Series. So what advice did you give to Easton? They called me on the drive up here and I said, it's just baseball, don't take it so serious. And you see these kids out there dancing on third base, they don't care, they're having fun. Yeah, I saw a little Gavin Weir dance on third no. base, so your message resonated. All right, should we do a little cheer to get him fired up? Because you guys have been really good at that. Are you ready? Let's go. Missing high school sports, there for your siblings. Here we go on three. One, two, three. Let's get fired up! At the end of the day, Julie Foudy wins. Yep, just the best ever. Puts the head on the pillow and says, I won again today. <laughs> Every day. Every day. Every day. Me won, everyone else zero. She's great to have here. <laughs> great. Four, five, and six as far as innings go. <laughs> Maddox Munson keeps pumping in pitches for strikes. He'll get Gavin Saylor to start off the top of the fourth inning. A little quicker, a little better from Maddox. He's throwing a little harder, keeping it down and away from the lefty. Wow. All right, then. Is that the same guy? All right, then. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. A couple two seam fastballs on the outside part of the play. Maddox doing pretty good here in the fourth. Okay, T Mobile going to bat for Little League to help more kids play ball. T Mobile Little League call up grant has raised over three and a half million dollars to cover registration fees, helping over 17,000 kids and counting play America's game. Way to go, T Mobile, stepping yeah. up for baseball. Oh. So we've seen Levi Smith, Donjus Sailor. Here's Chase Moore. Oh. Substitute. Now this guy has had great success. The Moke man is four for nine with a double. Whew. It's called strike there. Two guys on their bench. Bowman at 667. Yep. He did. He offered at that one. 
tell you what, Maddox Munson appears to have uh, gained about yeah. 15 miles an hour on his fastball. It's a little more giddy up in there right now. Get you a run. <laughs> that one is off the end of the bat. It is. It's coming hard now. Chase, 92 pounds. He's 12. Ridgeway Elementary. Not a shock. Favorite football team, Ohio State. How are we doing on a 2-2 pitch? We've spent a lot of time looking up at Jupiter, by the way. And this guy likes to look through microscopes. He's big into science, his favorite subject. Boy spoils another one. Looks very comfortable at the plate. Starting to warm up now. A little bullpen activity for Ohio. That's Caleb Harden. Yeah, he did, and that's a strikeout of both back-to-back punchouts for Maddox Munson. He started the day with a strikeout. Maddox Munson did. He hasn't had one since. And he said, Rav, he comes out here in the fourth inning. I think he's found a little bit more. Pretty much all fastballs. This is another fastball right here. Second straight strikeout, third of the game. Well, back to Crew Brown. He had a hit. Part of that big four-run inning. Oh. Which is one that's high. One of the great nicknames of the kids that have come here. Crew Brown. They call him the Crouton. Oh. Ooh. Took one there, 2 and all. a little frustration yeah, behind yeah, the play from down. Easton Riley. We like where Crew Brown's heart and head are at. That's in there for a strike. The question these kids all are asked, what if he won the lottery? He'd buy sports equipment and build stadiums for kids who can't afford it. Does it give them somewhere to play and something they can use to play with? We like that. Oh, cool. Shannon's going to be very proud of that. Of course, Mom has been interviewed a couple of times by Julie. She's a high school soccer coach. Dad's a high school basketball coach. And they got a lot of kids. They got a whole team. Aiden, Rowan, Declan, Cash, Lennox, and Crouton. Oh. We go full three and two. Three balls, two strikes. Pitch 54, and that is caught, no dropped. He had it for a second, it came in and out of the glove and back to first base safely is Crew Brown. That was another one, had a bunch of spin on it. When he hit the ground, it popped loose. So Crew Brown has two hits today. I think they've gone a combined like 31 feet. He's just putting them in the right spot. Bunt single the first time up, this one's in on his hands. Great effort right there by Maddox Munson. Lays out, has it for just a minute, but He's rolling over, that ball falls out. Crew Brown's two for two, standing on first base with two outs. Here's Levi Smith, had to double his first time up. Now he's hit by a pitch. Munson's frustrated with himself, and just like that, little two out reverse. Ohio now has a couple of base runners on. You're right here on the biggest stage in Little League. J.J. Vogel, oh. that's a ball. And you can see Crew Brown down there at second. He is antsy. Ball in play to get running. Oh. Another one inside. And Munson, who started this inning off, <laughs> looking like the next coming of Nolan Ryan with two quick strikeouts. Now all of a sudden in a little trouble. Single and a hit batter. Vogel. Caught by the first baseman, Hayden Gorsuch didn't have to jump too high for it. And they will strand two. Three and a half in the books. Ohio four, South Dakota one. What? Oh boy, forget it. That is smash. Cam Thorning. Pat Doc Young is at the wall. Oh, he robs him of a home run. The Hank Aaron Championship game, Michigan, winner, Great Lakes region, Hawaii, there you see those kids.
winner West Region, maybe California in the West Region Championship. And those two teams will take the field around 3.30 Eastern time, game two. Michigan has been very, very good, and they really believe, in spite of Hawaii's success here, they're going to win, and they're going to move on to the Little League World Series championship game tomorrow. They're throwing Cam Thorning, who has been their best hitter. They got a bunch of really good athletes, you know, multiple sport athletes. And Hawaii is just consistent. Don't make any mistakes. Don't hurt themselves. And in the first meeting, decided by just two runs, it was 2 nothing. It was just a couple of little mistakes that Michigan made that allowed Hawaii to win that game. Ryan Keanu pitched a complete game for Hawaii that day. He's not available. So they're going to get somebody else today. As we get set for the bottom of the fourth, South Dakota trying to come back. They're down 4-1 to one to Ohio. Right. And Bo Kerner is going to hit first. Once again, Cooper Oden throws that slow breaking pitch. And then he'll speed him up with a fastball. All on the outside corner. Chased one away. That's good pitching there by Cooper Oden. Start slow, move him out, and move him further out. Yeah, Mama may be pacing a little bit, but our guy Cooper on the mound, this this is slow heartbeat. Goes grab, grabs that four-seam fastball. It's the first pitch breaking ball. Fastball on the outside part of the play for strike two, then just expands his own a little bit more. He has consistently stayed away and has been really comfortable throwing a break ball whenever he wants to. Grayson Fox bats. Oh. That one is too far off. South Dakota going home for school once this ends, and whether it ends today or after tomorrow. Beautiful part of the country. They got about 70 parks there. Falls Park. And a one hopper over the head of the pitcher. Fielded, and just in time, Gage Maggard makes the play. Big hop over the head of Big Cooper Oden. But Maggard was there to make the play. Find Little League on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at the official handles at Little League. Follow the action, join the conversation, hashtag Little League World Series, LLWS. Two down, bottom four, 60 pitches thrown by Cooper Oden. And this is Kai Carlson. Oh. Pulls back, that's ball one. Got about 19 miles of paved road path for the biking, and the jogging, and the walking. Follows the big Sioux River in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Chase is a high one. Gavin Weir is going to get another chance to bat. It just feels like Gavin Weir, who's owned this Little League World Series, is going to have an offensive moment here. It feels like. Keep it here with three, maybe get another one and let him come up with runner on. He's only seen two pitches and two at bats. I think he's ready to get it done, too. First pitch swing in both times. This is popped up, and Odin underhands it, and makes the basket catch. Mom, all fired up. We don't pace, we just bounce up and down and cheer for Coop. He's been really good. It's Ohio 4, South Dakota, one at the end of four. The Little League World Series on ABC is presented by T-Mobile, the leader in 5G. The team likely to be a pitcher, especially if you're then on the all-star team that plays all summer. And it's quite clear, watching Brecken Butler pitch, that he's done this before. Yeah, this is not the first time right here. So he'll get Noah Davidson in his first Whoa. pitch. Spins just outside for a ball one. Trying to add to a 4-1 lead. Ohio Davidson, 0 for 2 today. Noah Kenzie way in at third. There's a oh. fastball that misses, throw down to first, and a good effort. Hayden Gorsuch. He may have landed on the hand of Rutherford as he dove back into first. But everybody appears to be okay. Good effort from Easton Riley behind the plate. Didn't waste any time either. Just snap throw right away. 
2-0. and oh. <laughs> Strike one. Well, McKenzie was crashing the party there at third base. Back up this way. And now the count goes even two and two. The batting average against South Dakota pitchers coming into today was 019. 019. 019. 19 er Yeah. And Ohio's got seven hits today, which yeah. is like a thousand against this good pitching staff, but the batting average against has gone from 019 to 110. Good pitch. And uh, yeah, we can see Brecken Butler has been there, done that. A little bite on the breaking ball, too. It's on the inside part of the play. Noah Davidson see that front knee kind of turn it in, but that is a very good spot. Hitter gives up on it because they see fastball instead. Late break keeps it on the inside part of the plate. Big strikeout first for Brecken. So one down for his pitch. That's a fastball way in. The big Maddox Jones single grounded out to the shortstop. Maddox was the first of the two kids that hit back to back grounders to Beitler on the mound, who was then at short. That one gets by. And that's going to allow Rutherford to get into scoring position. These are the things you can't afford to do as we get late here. Fifth inning, down four to one. We'll cross up there, maybe between Easton Riley and Breckett Beitler. Yeah, ben. Quick discussion. Make sure we're on the same page now with the guy standing on second base. Maddox Jones picked up his first hit here in Williamsport earlier today. Big swing and he fouls it straight back. Balls, two strikes. That's the pitch you got to hit on his last at bat, too. <laughs> Once you hit that one, in fact, he hit a liner to right field on a pitch at his chin. Swings and misses with that one. 2 2. What do we do here? Breaking pitch that rides outside. They throw down, and boy, Case and Mediger had to come from behind the big fellow who was laying a screen there, and he able to catch the ball. Otherwise, we got a runner at third base. Looked like a wide receiver. It sure did. I'll throw it where you need to go. 3-2. That's over the head of the first baseman, Gorsett. Into right it goes. McKinney coming home. Yes. Not in time. Rutherford scores. It's 5-1. Good play all around. McKinney made a good throw. Hopped up a little high on Riley and Rutherford from second. After advancing on the wild pitch, scores. Now at Maddox Jones. I mean, he's two for two with both hits going same location. Again, full count, two strikes. Little poke out to right, get another yes. run on the board for Ohio. So the Mad Dog delivers a hit, and now we got a pinch runner, Chase Moak. Good time for Maddox to show up. He was hitless until today, and now he's got two hits. Cooper Clay. Strike one. You wonder if South Dakota were able to advance, would this be the guy that would start? Because Weir wouldn't be available tomorrow. And that one's wide. Really good play from Easton behind the plate. Again, they've only played three games. South Dakota, they won them all between Weir and Munson, didn't give up anything. Oh. And now all of a sudden, Ohio's put up a five spot. This is what Ohio's done, too. Remember, they only scored one run in their first two games here. And on to score 16 in their final three, their offense just keeps getting better. To short, maybe two. Mediger steps on the bag to first, and it is a 6-3 double play. Case and Mediger put him at second, put him at short, put him anywhere. How smooth is strike play. Popped up, and that's going to be two strikes. Don't forget Hawaii and Michigan on an hour and 15 minutes from now, and that's what you do when you're at the Little League World Series. Place of dreams, you got a chance to watch the other kids play. They're about set to hit the field. They've been ready all summer. Bounce piece there from Cooper Oden. 
Next year's Little League World Series Classic, Baltimore Orioles, Boston Red Sox. Fairly certain. Mike Trout is already phoned in to see if he can get his Angels back while he's still playing with them. He wants well, everything to do with Williamsport. He was great. He told us when the schedule came out. That was the game he circled. It really bummed. I know he's miserable about not playing, but this was one of those dates where he was really excited to be here. McKinney fouls off another one. Starting to look at that Cooper Odin pitch count to yeah. 69 of 85. He's flexing that right arm too, which may be a little bit of a concern. One and two. Gets the swing and the miss. The ball was bobbled. Throw down to first in plenty of time. Nice job there, Noah Davidson. There was there was no panic. No, I would tell you this though. I, I, I think they got to go out and have a little discussion with him right now. That right arm, he's just kind of shaking it around. He's shaking his hand. They point to his knee. <laughs> I don't know. Give me the connection between yeah, shaking the right say. hand and the knee. Sometimes you get confused out there. <laughs> Here's Brecken Butler. He's late. The Brodens pitched a very good game. Struck out a half a dozen. Relied on his defense. Giving him some run support. Oh. It's been the curveball that is in the back of the head. And we've heard South Dakota talk about being late on the fastball. And KP, you've talked about this, how important the curveball, not only that pitch, but how much it plays up the fastball. The exercise routine continues for mom. She has been pacing up a storm up there. Yelling one more to Cooper Odin. Came in having thrown five and two thirds. He'd allowed five earned runs. He walked three. Much better, cleaner game today. That one to right and towards the line over there and diving, but in foul territory, Chance Rutherford can't make the play. About all you can do on that one. See it kind of come closer and closer to that wall. So he dives early, knowing if he dives any later, he's going to go right into the wall. Our guy, Casey Mediger, went Chris down Lawrence. to the bullpen. Play. I think he's just kind of sitting on the wall out there watching that. <laughs> Slow roller to short. Cooper Clay's been rock solid, and he is again. He fires across the diamond to get Butler. So two down in the fifth. Brecken Butler has been retired three times. Shortstop, shortstop, shortstop. Here comes our guy, Mediger, and here comes Hawaii. That looks like a Little League World Series championship team. They have since they've been here, I know that. Just as deep and versatile as prior Hawaii teams. You know, Boston Bryant trying to get on here for Weir. He is two for two. Ball, in. In. Inside, ball one. <laughs> Looks like a baseball player, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. All the mannerisms. Waited on that one, popped it up. Maddox Jones, third baseman. Oh, that's a hard play to make, and it goes off his glove. You know, it was tough when he was going trying to make that play, and it ends up in the right spot. He picked the ball up, looked back down, then went to try to pick the, the ball back up. And a lot of times, you look down just for a minute, look back up, it's, it's just that much tougher to pick up that baseball as it's coming back. Next one. Good pitch. Oh. Inside. Oh. That's where you want that, too. When they're crowding the plate like that, it's hard to find that spot. The Boston Bryant man, two for two today, five for 11 at the World Series. Slap right at the shortstop. That's caught in the air. Cooper Clay. Uh, they're not trying to hit it to him, but every time they do, he makes the play. 
they've given up five here. So we go to the last inning in a big swing. And a ball fouled back. Brady Bauman. We've got rally gloves. We've got a baseball in the rally glove. I like that. So we're trying to fire up an Ooh, offense. Yeah. South Dakota that hasn't really managed much of anything. Beitler back on the mound. And Bauman, by the way, another one of those substitute players who's had great success. He and Chase Moak coming into the game were 6 for 12 off the bench. Woo! That's filthy right there. One ball, two strikes. Oh. Just to hang in there right now. Brecken Beitler likes that breaking ball when he gets around it. He's got a lot of side to side, really moving away from those right handed hitters. Two balls and two strikes. Nobody out, sixth inning, leading 5 1. The next one misses away, and now we're full of three balls, two strikes. A little Stroman hesitation right there on the way to home plate, too. Paused just a little bit when he got up to that balance point, changed his cadence a little going home. wonder if this is the last batter that Beitler will face. He's now exceeded the 20 pitch limit, but he started this batter, Bauman, prior to that. And if you want to use him tomorrow, and if you think you got a big comeback in you, you can bring yep. Brecken back. We did see Casey Mediger warming up. Bigger concern is where they get runs on the ground. Here's Mediger. He feels that fine. Yep. Shortstop play has been terrific today. Will be two Sunday night series finale. Yankees and the A's. They're at the Coliseum in Oakland on ESPN. ESPN Deportes, the ESPN app. One app, one tap. Coverage starts 6 Eastern time with baseball tonight. Sunday night countdown. See the missile that Giancarlo Stanton hit yesterday. He's hitting a lot of them lately, but yeah. yesterday's was a bullet. The Yankees are in the mode of just not losing. You like a team on a 13 game win streak? Well, you like the Yankees. Yankees and A's tomorrow night, Sunday night baseball. Pitching change here in Williamsport. We'll be back right after these messages. Welcome back to ABC's coverage of the Little League World Series presented by T Mobile. Full disclosure, we were a little concerned about the weather today, but this is the nicest day we've had yeah. in our stay here. Temperatures cool, breeze blowing in a little bit. Skies becoming more and more blue. Love that. New pitcher is Casey Mediger. He's got a new catcher behind the plate, Boston Bryant. Mediger's goal, let's get out of this inning. No more runs. Let's see if we got some we can cook up in the bottom of the sixth inning. First pitch right over our heads. Cooper Odin, 79 pitches. So he's gonna face Gavin Weir, which will be a great matchup, and then he's likely gonna have to come out of the game, and if not there, after the next hitter. Oh. Just see the West Side Little League kind of imagine during their regular season when you've got Beitler on one team and Mediger playing short on another team. Kenzie, Gorsett, all these kids competing against each other. That's a really good pitch. Facing each other. And that's a slow roll of foul. Same with South Dakota. Mom is still pacing, even though <laughs> even though Cooper is now at the plate. I think our step count is today in that aisle. I'm getting up there. I wonder if she's got one of those little eye uh, watches or whatever those things are. To wait, you know, would make sense. Baseball hotbed, West Side Little League, just outside of Cincinnati, Ohio. Huge baseball city. 
And he spins one in there, and oh, he's gone on a strikeout from Casey Mediger. Two down. Second base, shortstop. Now on the mound, Casey Mediger. Forget too. I mean, these kids are 12 years old. Like the, the, his hands aren't very big. It's hard to get over the top of that breaking ball like he did right there. But spun a good one, gets a strikeout. Second out of the inning. That's a strike. It's one of those guys you remember from Little Leagues. You'll remember Casey Mediger. You remember yes. the blonde hail. You remember the plays he made. You'll remember Bagoyo at second base for Hawaii. You'll oh. certainly remember Gavin Weir. Lucier one ball, one brothers strike. from New Hampshire. Remember them. Mediger's nickname is Grilled Cheese. Oh, that was a close one. Yeah, that's one of those. Grilled Cheese wanted that call right there. He did. <laughs> Why Grilled Cheese? Just because. Well, just because. Yeah. No explanation from one of the sisters who gave him the nickname Grilled Cheese. Of course, now he says because of the hair. Yeah. It just stuck. Yep. <laughs> when I see blonde hair coming out right the side away. of that, I, I think Grilled Go Cheese. Grilled Cheese. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? <laughs> Trying to retire Crew Brown for the first time today. He will not offer it that. That's a good take. So we've we got a full meal here. We've got grilled cheese taken on the crouton. Three balls, three strikes. Ready? Ball four. Getting fun. Yeah. That was a really good at bat right there. I like it. It's a three really good at bats so far. Reach pace every time. Hey, did you see uh, Bowman about take me out? All right, here's Levi Smith. He had a big hit early in that second inning. A little late here and charging is Kenzie, and he will flip to first, and that will do it for Ohio in the sixth. South Dakota coming to the plate, maybe for the last time. Gavin Weir will lead things off, and they're not quitting on that side. The Little League World Series on ABC is presented by T-Mobile, the leader in 5G. Tom Seaver Championship right, South Dakota and Ohio, and soon the Hank Aaron Championship game, Hawaii and Michigan, traditionally Championship Saturday, you have the United States champion and the international champion. But international teams not part of the 2021 Little League World Series. Hoping, like, heck, next year, those two teams, Michigan, Hawaii, have more company. Supposed to have an expanded Little League World Series this year with up to 20 teams, but of course, that was scrapped by COVID. And by two more U.S. teams. So we'll go from our traditional field and grow it. Most important part here, bottom six. Gavin Weir leads things off against Cooper Oden. And he actually took a pitch. It was a slow breaking ball for strike one. Let's see if Gavin can put another one over the right field wall. Nope, he beats it into the ground. Now he's going to have to beat it out. And he does. That's just a good athlete on a well-played ground ball by Gage Maggard. Gavin Weir is just a different level. All right, now if you're South Dakota, you just want base runners, and Gavin Weir gets it started right there. But Gage Maggard, man. Good play. I mean, about slide into the back end. The only chance he has to make this play is to do this. Slides into it, gets up to his knees, throws it. But Weir from the left side, just a little bit too quick on there with a leadoff single. All right, so down by four, Noah Kenzie. Oh. That's in the dirt. Weir is inviting a throw down to first from Noah Davidson. 82 pitches for Cooper Oden, so we're very likely going to have a pitching change this inning, barring double play. This one is past the dive of Maggard, and Weir will go to second and stay there, and here you go. South Dakota, a little rally here in the sixth. Two on, nobody out. Nice 
That's twice now from Kenzie. Two big hits. Extend the inning. This is the part of the order right here, right in the middle. So we've got a couple of pitches. We'll see if hey, you're all right. Make a change. You're gonna finish this battle. Okay? I'm just trying to kill the momentum a little bit, all right? We're gonna finish this battle. Um you got him last time. Just do it in. Never know. It's turned down, hit a ground ball, turned down play. Got me? You got me? You want to finish? He was safe. He was safe. Yeah, right? he was safe. Finish this, y'all. Come on. Come on. What, brother? Yeah. Fifteen hits, all singles, but we are on our feet now on both sides. Ohio trying to advance to tomorrow's title game in South Dakota. Got to make sure that doesn't happen. It's Oplin Soniston with nobody out. Yeah. Strike one. Yeah. Oppie sends one into center. That gets down. Where is coming? And he's going to score. He ran right by the coach who was saying, stay right here. And he had another idea. It's five to two. Nobody out in the bottom of the sixth. <laughs> he was not stopping. And right through the stop sign, a beautiful <laughs> job and a breaking ball. Sonishin drives us right back up the middle, past the bat. We've seen three hits in a row now, but watch Gavin Weir. Watch him, and I love coaches down the line. No, you stay, you stay. And he's like, uh-uh. I come this far, I'm going to keep on going. Cooper Odin gets a very big hug. It's Ken Coomer, Danny Adams, Chris Kraft, who've been with this group the whole time, trying to hang on here. You've got a little action now in the bottom of the six. Just what you hope for in a game of this magnitude. Both of these teams trying to advance to the Little League World Series title game. And South Dakota showing some life. Started by Weir with a single, Kenzie with a single, and then Sonneson goes back up the middle. So it's 5-2, and I don't know, did you think that the way things were going, the tying run was going to come to the plate? Pretty impressive for South Dakota to get up off the mat here a little bit. Yeah, I guess. I mean, you, you knew they wouldn't go away. I think it was just that part of the lineup. Gavin Weir gets things started. He gets on, and now we just kind of keep the line moving. And, and if you're South Dakota, I know they've got three straight hits in this in it. You still just wanted to get to the bullpen. You wanted to see yeah. somebody else because Cooper Oden was really good all day. Now you got a chance. What have we seen throughout this entire tournament is some fight. Fight late, and when you get behind, just being able to not give up. You hear the coaches talk about it, but the players really responding to it in the sixth. Get three straight hits and a run. How about running straight through the stop sign? Mike Gorsuch, the third base coach, the head coach for this team from South Dakota, and it was no, 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 go, go, go. Everything changed when Gavin Weir went sprinting right by him. He scored easily. Still nobody out, too. And there was no throw at all from the center field. It no. just came to the cutoff, man. And again, Weir, with these bases 60 feet away from each other, somebody as athletic as he is, he gets yep. there in what? Four or five seconds maximum. I mean, he can flat out put him down. And now he'll watch and see what the rest of this lineup can do against the lefty Caleb Harden. Gunnar Alfson. Five strikeouts, no walks. Big number, the no walks. First pitch, though, is a little high. Way outside, and that's going to allow both runners to advance. That's a big, wild pitch, because now the force is off, and that idea of a double play seems far less likely. I think we're probably taking one here now, too. First two have missed, both up. That one high arm side. Probably want to make him show you a strike. Three balls, no strikes. Kaysen Mediger, who was pinch hit for, is now on at second base. So Kenzie's your runner at third. Mediger is at second. And Alfson looks at a 3 0 strike. And I love that it's Gunnar Alfson. I mean, he's. He was the one playing right field. 
Three runs ended up scoring on the air. He came up to bat after that, got a big hit, a big smile, getting his team back in this. And of course, the game finds him again right here in the sixth. Big 3-1 pitch. That's high. Bases are loaded. And here comes South Dakota. And Sioux Falls Little Leaguers are all fired up. Off the middle, turn two. And now the force is back on everywhere. Allison, pinch run four. Bo Kerner is now at first base. Well, here you go. Mike Gorsuch looks down from the third base coach's box to his son. Hayden Gorsuch. What a spot. Oh. Ball one. Tough spot for Caleb Harden to come in. Nobody out. Trailing by three. Bases loaded. Last inning. Good swing. Gorsuch. Behind one and two. He was really, really good today. And now he's an observer. Odin watching. Harden. Got a ball and two strikes. The outfield is very shallow, especially in right with Weatherford. He swings and misses. Gorsuch's gone. And that's out number one. Big out. Yeah. Yeah, that'll slow the heartbeat down a little bit. Caleb, Caleb Harden out there and got a walk to start it off and a little spinner right there. Left on left breaking ball. Big first out right there. Double play would end it. Easton Wiley. Bats for South Dakota. Everything you want in a game. You got the bases loaded. Down by three. Mm, almost hit him. He got out of the way of that one. Yeah, he's, he's thinking twice about it right now, too. Check <laughs> his head. Three X. South Dakota's made a living coming from behind. Five of their eight runs at the World Series have come in their last at bat. Easy E to right, Rutherford right there makes the play and retreating back to third. Mm, tough one for Kenzie, he was a few feet off the bag, he's banging his helmet. That was a really good read, Rutherford plays shallow and Kenzie by just being off a few feet has to go back to the base, watch him there. You know, and this is a hard read because it's a line drive, it's not like it's an easy fly ball, it's hard off the bat, but if he gets back immediately, he scores easily. They need more than him. Well, they got a couple of messages now. Swing for the fences and two out rally. Alex McKinney will step to the plate for Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Caleb Harden needs one out, and Ohio will move on to play for the championship. Strike one, good start. Strike. No the nickname is ATM, and they need a little action here. Down the third baseline. Oh, what a play. Maddox Jones snared it. Tag the bag, and Ohio wins the Tom Seaver Championship. That was not an easy play for Maddox Jones at third. It took a big hop. He got his glove on it, slapped the bag, and they will play for the Little League World Series Championship on Sunday.
That had, that had extra bases and multiple yeah. runs all over it. I, the, the last two did. I mean, the ball was hit hard to right field, but in that case, Rutherford just had it played perfectly as to where he started. That one off the bat looked like it was extra bases. Good pick by Maddox Jones and Hamilton, Ohio, will play for the Little League World Series championship tomorrow. You may have a all great leaks. Little League World Series Championship if Michigan can beat Hawaii. That bounced, that bounced off. He made a great play. Yes, going, he did. Going down to a knee to make it, too, and it helped so much being able to come to third because he's not going to be able to throw out across the field. Beautiful job getting to this. That at least scores two. Save the game, Maddox Jones. The other thing is it turns a lineup over. I mean, it gets you back to the top of the order if you're